Today, I want to talk about some really interesting points about selenium um, that you've never heard before. So when I talk about selenium, which is the trace mineral, Brazil nuts are really high in selenium. They might know that it's involved in thyroid function. It helps convert uh, T4, the inactive version of the thyroid hormone, to the active form of the thyroid hormone, T3. They may also know that it helps to detoxify mercury, and it can help fight and prevent cancer, especially of the prostate and the lung. Selenium is also really important in cardiovascular health and preventing strokes, and also in preventing dementia, uh, simply because it tends to fight free radicals and inflammation that can occur in the brain. And so it's really good in the prevention of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other types of degeneration that occur in our nervous system. And so here are some things that you probably don't know about selenium. Uh, the real reason why it's high in Brazil nuts. Now the Brazil nuts come from the Brazilian tree, which is in South America. And what's unique about the soil that this tree is grown on is that it's nearly absent of sulfur. And the chemistry of sulfur is very similar to selenium. And this means that selenium can bind with certain amino acids, just like sulfur can, and be a functional substitute for sulfur. And so when you just consume one Brazil nut, you're getting like, I think, 96 micrograms of selenium, which is more than enough. You don't need a lot of selenium. You just need tiny amounts because there are also, on the flip side, is some problems with taking too much selenium and becoming selenium toxic. And from that, you can get hair loss, neuropathies, tremors, other neurological problems, issues with the heart. There's a lot of issues that you can get if you take too much. So just because a lot of people are deficient in selenium, like over a billion doesn't mean they should start overloading their bodies with selenium, especially out of the um, balance of all the trace minerals. I mean, the requirements for selenium are roughly between 50 and 70 micrograms, okay? But here's the big question and something that rarely do people know about. Why are so many people deficient in selenium? Is it because they don't consume enough Brazil nuts? Well, selenium is in a lot of other foods. It's in your meats, it's in red meats, it's in organ meats, it's in shellfish, like I said. It's even in uh, chicken and turkey and pork and uh, lamb. It's in egg yolks, okay? It's in nutritional yeast. Now it's also in certain plants, but not in very high amounts. Where do animals get their selenium? Well, from the plants that grow on the land. Where does the plants get it? From the soil. Now here's the thing that is new information for most people. Selenium is not just sitting there passively in the soil waiting to be absorbed. It's usually in a form that the plant roots have a difficult time extracting. They need help and they get help from the microbes. And this is actually very new information. And I'm going to show you a video right now of a close-up of really what happens and how plants get the majority of their nutrition. So if you see these little things by the root, you're getting this exchange from the bacteria, okay, being absorbed into the root, but really the plant root is eating the bacteria and it's extracting the minerals. And then the bacteria in the process loses its cell wall. It's still alive. It actually gets food from the root. It's fed carbohydrates. Of course, they're not on keto. And then the root spits out this bacteria to start this cycle again and again. This whole cycle is called rhizophagy, which basically comes from two words, rhiza meaning root and phagy meaning eat, okay? So the roots that eat bacteria that then get a lot of their nutrition and then they spit it out and they actually start this cycle over and over and over again. And so what's really missing in this chain of events is microbe diversity and the amount of microbes in the soil. So we just don't pay attention or consider importance this biology in the soil, in the amount of bacteria and fungus, as well as in the diversification of these microbes. And this has been really a huge omitted factor in the health of the soil, in the health of the plant, in the health of the animal, and in our health. The microbes are the workhorse that uh, have certain acids that mobilize these minerals from rocks. And unless someone understands that, especially farmers, okay? Unfortunately, a lot of the conventional farmers don't understand that. And so they don't have this biology in the soil. And now what happens is that they're forced to put 
various things in the soil, uh, usually NPK, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to kind of boost the growth of the plant. And so the health of the plant's not there. And so insects and pests accumulate. And so they have to use pesticides and then the weeds come, they have to use herbicides. And what's even more wild is that all the way up the chain, you know, we suffer. We don't have necessarily the, the strength that we should have with our immune system. So we're forced to take antibiotics. Now you might want to say, what about the microbes in the soil? Do they get antibiotics? Well, it just so happens that one of the most uh, common herbicides out there is classified as an antibiotic. Even when you buy soil at the store, okay, to grow certain things, if you're buying the soil, it comes sterilized, okay? They sterilize it. Sterilization means you kill the microbes, you heat it up. So the more that we omit this very important factor, this biology in the soil, and the more that we eat, you know, pasteurized foods, sterilized foods, cooked foods, canned foods, the more our health suffers. And this is why in a lot of my videos, I talk about at the very least, start consuming fermented foods, start buying foods from farmers that really care about their soil, that grow things with microbial diversity. So I just spent a little more time on that one topic because it's so important. Here are a couple other points too. Um, it could be that you have a genetic uh, mutation related to the proteins or enzymes with selenium, in which case it makes it even more important to get enough selenium to build up certain enzymes like glutathione, which is greatly needed in the liver to help you detoxify poisons, and even mercury in the liver. When people take statins, statins are drugs that block cholesterol. Many times they have muscle symptoms and neurological symptoms. Well, it just so happens that those symptoms mimic a selenium deficiency because statins actually interfere with the enzymes that involve selenium. When you get enough selenium, your muscles are protected. And this is probably why animal proteins like red meat, and other types of muscle protein uh, are loaded with selenium. And there's also some great data on how selenium can directly increase the diversification of your own microbiome and increase the abundance of your microbes. So apparently microbes really like selenium, especially if you have dysbiosis or some type of imbalance with your microbes. However, another really important topic related to selenium has to do with this mercury in fish, okay? For that information, I highly recommend you watch this video right here.